Hey guys, and welcome back to the Greenwich Homesteads. It's spring, uh, weather has finally stabilized, and I decided that we're gonna go ahead and do another quick little walk through update tour on our gardens. Not a lot has changed since the last time you've been here. We did lose a few things to the pigs. We lost a few things to the frost. Before we do the garden, I wanted to do a quick update. <laughs> Two nights ago, we had four litters born. Now, three of them I knew were kindling and they were all set up properly. One of them was a new doe that I had recently purchased and I did not know that I had purchased her bread. But she's still really young and I'm thinking this was probably her first kindling. She also was in isolation so I did not have her with a nesting box. So she had a litter on the wire. Now I did take those kits and tuck them into the nests of the other moms. My moms are very experienced and all of the kits that were born to the new mom were accepted and are alive and well except for one. So tucked back here is my Angora cotton ball. And as you can sh see, she is a broken color. And in her little box, she has nine kits. I'm not gonna disturb them, they're still fairly young. I do have a clip that I got the other day which I'll insert in here so you can see what they look like. Over here is Miss Sharon. She is a lion's mane. And in her box over here, she has eight babies. And then last but not least over here, this is Smoke and she's my mini Angora. And her kits are in there, all nice and happy. So these two ladies here are the two new does that I got and they are in isolation. This one here closest to us, she's the one that had the litter. These are both New Zealand, they're not full grown yet, but I did not know she was bred. But other than that, she's doing good. They're both doing okay, and like I said, they're in isolation. They'll be in isolation for another couple weeks. The reason that I choose to isolate my rabbits is when I purchase them from someone else, I'm not aware of the conditions that they were raised in. When you don't have control of where they were raised, how they were born, and what conditions they grew up in, it's always good to put them somewhere where they can't bring something into your herd and to watch them for a little while, make sure they're not sick. And if they get sick, then you can treat them and it's an isolated situation. But let's get on to the garden because that's what you're all here for. This bare spot here, this is where the pigs had cleared for us. This is going to be my flower garden, cut flower garden area, sitting area. This is been sat now for about three weeks without the pigs on it. We have added compost from the chicken coop to it as well as dried leaves. So this will get turned here in a little while and then it'll be ready to plant probably next weekend. I'm still going to top it off with a little bit of uh, super soil that we have coming in on a truckload next weekend. It's still early so we don't have much done up here. I do have a few little things in my planter boxes. They didn't do so well in that freeze that we had but it's easy to replant annuals. We are still thinking about trimming this grass out and putting up uh, railroad ties and actually putting dirt in here and turning this whole area into a planted space. Usually by this time of year I have everything weeded and mulched and in between the beds. However, we are going to be purchasing new mulch this year. We have a problem with tangleweed and it's basically a wild morning glory. The vines, the roots are in the soil and they pull up in through the bed and they make a really big mess. So we're just gonna hardcore this year, drop a big heavy tarp down between the pathways and put new mulch on top and hopefully we can contain that a bit. So the, unfortunately it still looks a little messy. It bugs me, I'm sure you guys probably don't care, but it bugs me. <laughs> and I, I really, I'm like chomping on the bit to get it taken care of. We've got that little L-shaped bed back there is my flower bed. It took some pretty heavy damage from the frost. I planted 20 lily bulbs because I really want to start a little spot with Asiatic lilies. Between the roosters and the pigs and the snow, I don't know if I'm going to actually get any lilies. I've got five of them that came up and they were all out during the two days of where we got below freezing. I think we hit, the lowest we hit was 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. They look okay. See. These are my sad lilies. That one was barely out of the ground, so was this one. That one I'm not quite sure what it's doing. 
just growing the leaves is not growing up those two are growing a little more naturally but you can see they took some pretty heavy damage from the frost sadly i did lose all of my basil blueberries may or may not make it cilantro looks a little worse for the wear but it is coming back with a vengeance so that's good and the rest of the tea garden slash herb bed looks fantastic this is the little square bed that my banana plants were in and I had lilies in the front. However, the bananas did not make it through this winter. I kind of had a feeling they wouldn't. They're supposed to be cold hardy, however, this winter was a little weird. We got a really, really deep freeze for about two weeks in, in February when they were just starting to wake up again. So they did not make it. Right now I do not have bananas in the garden, which is sad. Sad me. I did go ahead and seed radishes in here. This is just a scatter seed. They may or may not get full size. I like radishes for the baby greens as well as for the full size radish. So that bed is doing okay. Come over here to the tea garden from the other side. We've got my mother's wart is doing quite well. My sage has come back. I've got my new rosemary and my old rosemary that I thought was gone actually survived. So we're good on that. I've got some raspberries in the corner here that are coming up and these irises are just doing amazing. My oregano has come back full force. Some more little ditch irises here. This is a goji berry and I've got some oriental poppies right here. And then of course my lemon balm. I have another blueberry hiding right here and this is this little tea rose that somebody gave me. In this bucket over here is my beauty berry. Now, the fun thing about beauty berries is they are one of the last things to bud out, so they always look like you have this dead plant in your garden. But don't cut them down because they will come back. My green stalk lettuce tower is doing amazing. I've already harvested quite a bit off of these. As I go through and I reach underneath and I pick these big outer leaves and I just pick a bunch of leaves from a bunch of different plants. That way the plant stays alive and just keeps regrowing. I like this thing. This thing's doing quite well. Um, I do have some strawberries down here at the bottom which are starting to turn. I'm gonna have some strawberries soon. I have some more lettuce planted in this little kiddie pool. I also have some cilantro in here and I did put a ground cherry or at least some ground cherry seeds in the center. I don't know if they're gonna come up or not. I also have this strawberry right here. I found it in growing in my walkways, so I stuck it in there. It may or may not survive. The onion bed is coming along quite nicely, as well as my cabbages. It's almost time to harvest the spinach. I've got some chives over here and an onion from last year that is about to go to flower and seed, which is nice because I'll save those. This empty space here is going to get planted up with soybeans and edamame once the spinach comes out and this whole half of the bed will be that. Uh, I've got my arch trellis up, if you can see it. And that's gonna have, I've got beans planted and seed underneath on this side and I've got some cucumbers on this side here. My asparagus bed, it did take a little bit of hit with the cold, but not too bad. Coming over here, I have a nice little oak leaf lettuce that I found also growing in the walkway and I just stuck it in here. I have nasturtiums seeded in here as well. Garlic bed is doing fantastic. I also have some nasturtiums seeded in the corners of this bed. They'll come up when it's warm enough for them. Second onion bed is doing good. These are the sweet onions. And down the center here, I've got some cauliflower planted. I did replant cauliflower after the pigs came through. I have never grown cauliflower before and I really wanted to grow cauliflower this year. I did have some extras. So when the pigs came through and tore out my other cauliflower bed, I made sure to get a couple in the ground so I can at least see how they grow and see how they do here in my garden and have some cauliflower. Back there is the old cauliflower bed that the pigs destroyed. I have in it right now, I have seeded carrots, which have just started to come up. And then you see the little plant rings I have there. I also have okras that I just put in for seed and they'll come up in between. I like growing tall spindly plants like okra, tomato, tomatillos. I like growing carrots underneath them because the carrots provide a living mulch and they don't have roots that compete with each other. This bed behind me here, I have sugar snap peas 
planted on the back row all along underneath to grow on that trellis and I have seeded corn. Now I grow sweet corn up here in my little garden, this little patch right here. I can grow almost a hundred ears of corn in this patch because it likes to grow in clumps. And you do have to feed them a little extra because corn is a nutrient sucker. My rhododendras are doing good. I have a little, another little stowaway overwintered lettuce that I just left because he's doing too good to pull out and kill. This big empty space right here behind me this is where my tomato beds are going to be going. I have one set up already. Notice it has been moving around because I do have a worker in there. My old breeding buck is in here. He's retired and he will just stay with me until he passes of natural causes. But for now, for this summer, he gets a treat where he gets to be put out here in the day and moved around and clear some of the weeds for me. You can kind of see where he's been. So this is Popsicle. He is one of my older bucks that is retired from breeding. Hi, Popsy. He's so cute. He is about six years old, which is pretty old for a rabbit. And I just want to touch on that with here on our farm. When I use rabbits for breeding, I usually breed them twice a year to not stress them out. And I usually keep them for about three to four years breeding. And then I retire my rabbits. So Pops will basically just live his life out here on the farm doing what rabbits do, eating greens and having a good time and living his best life. I know I didn't take you down to the market garden today, but we haven't really changed much in there with that freak cold that we had last week. We didn't really get a lot of time to work out in the garden. I'm excited because my peppers and my tomatoes and my eggplants and all of my warm weather crops are about to go into the garden and this season's about to take off. This is one of the things that I really love about growing my own food is this time of year, seeing the, the little tiny seed that I took and put into soil and put love and care into become a plant and then become food that will in turn love and care for me. That's one of the reasons I garden and I highly encourage other people to do it. You just have to put a plant in the soil and get started. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I love seeing the comments down below letting me know how I'm doing. If there's anything that you would like to know more about our property. I do plan on having a walkthrough on some of the buildings that we have. I had said it before, I know, but I had hurt my knee, so it was a little hard getting around. But everything is good now. I look forward to hearing from you guys and reading your comments. And thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so you can get notified whenever we update. And thanks for watching. And remember, get your hands dirty.